As some of you know, we've been on a trip out west and uh, got home and um, pretty uneventful other than Brad. Uh, Brad pulled a camper home and he pulled oxygen back, didn't you? Or he pulled one out and oxygen back. The uh, <laughs> And a lot of times it's, it seems like it's a little difficult to get back into the groove of things. You get kind of out of the flow and you're out of the, 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 the groove of how your life goes on a regular basis. And I remember growing up, um, some of you may find this hard to believe, but I was a little bit of a rambunctious, hard-headed child. <laughs> and uh, my mom... I'm going to heckle Bev when she's talking in a few minutes. The, uh, you always do. I do. That's true. You have to say it consistent. Um, my mom and I are, we don't, really mix, we don't really mix a lot of words. My mom's pretty blunt. Uh, my dad's pretty blunt. And that leads to me to say things sometimes I wish I didn't. But growing up. We went to First Baptist Church, and, and at the time when I was in, in, in youth group and, and, uh, and maybe 10 or 12, I didn't have a lot of friends that went to church with me. They just, I, that wasn't really my social group, and I'm a social person. Um, there's nothing I love more than a meal that I can talk to somebody. That's like my favorite thing in the world, uh, food, and I can talk to you. But the, uh, I can remember going, waking up. And having these thoughts as a child, well, I don't want to go because I don't have any friends, and I don't know those people, and I don't like the lessons, and I, 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 I. And my mom has a way of lining you out. <laughs> and I remember this vividly, and it happened more than one occasion. She would, she would kind of say, listen, first of all, she said, church is not about you, it's about him. That's what she'd tell me. Oh, way to step me back, mom. First of all, church is not about you. It's about God and how you can serve him or how you can grow in him. And then I remember her telling me this. She said, son, if you can just get one thing, one thing from church, one, one line, one word, one encouragement, one thing. And she would say, see, the word of God says that it doesn't return void. It doesn't return void. So you pick up one thing and, you, you, and that sticks in you that's with you for life. And see... Moving on down the timeline of my life, I would get to points in my life and I would remember things that I learned in the Sunday school class that I didn't want to go to because my friends weren't in there. See, because all those stories you learn about in the Bible, listen, they have value in their truth today. Circumstances change, but truth doesn't. I think about, uh, think about the... Um, Joseph and the coat of many colors. You think about all, remember we had the felt boards. And you'd move the people around and you'd put the coats on. See, those things get stuck in your memory of who you are. And listen, God's word doesn't return void. So regardless of why you're here, whether you came happily or you got, like I did as a child, drug. I can remember my dad grabbing me by my jeans. And we, I don't remember if we had car seats then, but I do remember how I got into the vehicle swiftly one of those kind of deals <laughs> but I don't I don't it doesn't matter why you're here listen you're here yeah. and you can do one of two things you can plug in or you can check out right. and listen church a check out is just a waste of time and you may think it's just coincidence that you're here be that as it may but see God has divine appointments see and Here's what happens. I like to turkey hunt in the spring. Speaking of that, there's a bunch of corn up here. I don't know what that's all about. You see, here's what happens in turkey season. You wake up early. You drive somewhere in the dark. And you get out. And you may have to walk a while. And see, here's, here's what you're doing. You're eagerly anticipating what? A turkey to gobble. And even if I'm hunting with one of my friends... And sometimes those guys, I don't see them except in turkey season. And I want to talk to them because they're my friends. And again, I like to talk. But we don't talk. We listen. I'm not on my cell phone. We don't have the radio playing. We're listening. The reason being, because if one gobbles way off, i got to be able to hear it. See, because if you're talking, or you're, where, where was that? One? I don't know. Shut up so we can hear. Okay. And then you listen. See, now I give you that example for this. There comes a time you need to quit talking and you need to start listening. 
Because many of you have been praying for a long time. Which way do I go? God, I'm at this crossroads. Do I go right, left, backwards, forwards? What do I do? Eventually, you got to quit talking and start listening. Because I don't, this has been my experience. Now, listen, you, you take this for what it's worth. When the Spirit of God speaks to me, it's not with a megaphone. One of the things that irritates me the most in my life is my oldest daughter trying to talk over me. Trying to talk over me. See, every time God's ever spoke to me, it's not screaming over what I'm saying. You got to be still long enough and quiet long enough to hear him respond. So this morning, you can check in or you can check out. God gives you the freedom to do that. But you're here. You've made the effort. You've made the drive. You put on one of your three shirts in your rotation of Sundays, and you're here. So it would make sense to me to plug in. To plug in. Because God's going to see. This is what his word says, church. All we can do in life is stand on what his word says. It says he's the, excuse me, he's the way. You don't know which way to go. Guess what? He does. And you don't even need to know the way. You just need to know who to follow. He says, I'm the way. I'm the truth. And he says, and I'm the light. God's here this morning. Because his word says, where two or more are gathered in his name, he's here also. So let's plug in this morning. Stand to your feet. Father God, we thank you, God, that you're here, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the truth of your words, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that life is not this corn maze of confusion, Lord. Where we just, we go down these long stretches, Lord, and we hit, and we hit a dead end, and then we got to go back. And then we go to the left, and that's a dead end. And we go to the right, and that's a dead end, Lord. But your word says you're the way. You're the way. Lord, and just like following somebody through a, through a big city, you don't need to know really where you're going. You just need to know who to follow to get there. Lord, we follow you this morning, Lord. We look for you, Father God. Lord, just like a spring morning on a high ridge, we're not talking, we're not texting, but we're listening. Lord, we thank you for who you are, God. We thank you for what you're going to do, Lord. Lord, we look to you with eager anticipation, Father God, of what you're going to do. Lord, because we know that your word says, Father God, you don't have harm ahead of us. Lord, but you have hope ahead of us. Lord, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen.
So we pour out our praise to you only. We sing. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. God, for your restoration power this morning, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that you just breathe life into every one of us this morning, God. That you are hope, and you're our strength, and you're my joy, God. <laughs> and we lean into you this morning. Hallelujah. know in this community and I pretty much consider the Branson area you know it's it's part of a big community we've all been there many times wow what a devastating thing and you know I was just thinking and, and honestly this past week I had these songs were on my mind from early in the week and had already sent out the list to the team and and then Thursday evening I'm sitting at the house and I get a message from SEMA. 
and it was flashing in a different color like I had not been trained on before and I didn't understand it and it said wind alert <laughs> and I thought wind alert I'm not sure how I'm supposed to alert the public on a wind alert <laughs> so I felt a little helpless there for a moment but I felt that just that burden came on and as it started explaining what was really going on it was it was just an ironic thing that they were saying please if you have people at the lake or on the lake or near the lake please call them and let them know because part of the problem was is that the wind was coming before the storm so you've seen the line of storms that were lit up I mean it was lit up from north of 60 all the way down toward the Branson area and but there was this long green line and it was the green line went first and then it was just like nothing at all and then the storm that green line was the wind and it was going to be arriving about two miles before the storm it's not normal it's not normal and how do you get that word out to people that are having a great time on the lake my mind I was so burdened that night I thought I don't know what to do you know I was even thinking about our own community about 75 mile an hour winds in the our downtown area and, and the old buildings and I thought what do I do and here I was thinking more about myself what do I do to help warn people and it really within 30 minutes you know we find out that there's been a boat capsized and I didn't know if it was someone's boat or if it was you know, on, uh, you know, we're talking about the Branson Bell was down there. So many things that was going through my mind and I didn't know. And as word was coming in, it just from moment to moment in our humanly minds, it just got worse and worse and worse as the story comes in. And my heart was just so burdened for so many people. And of course, my first thought was, how many people do I know that that's been in Branson for the past few weeks? And it was many, many people. And I thought, Lord, really? Could this really happen? You know, and we see these things happen all over the world, but this is our neck of the woods. And so I was thinking about later after all of this, about these songs, and I thought, how so fitting that when our world is shaken, and this is kind of what the next song, You Amaze Us, it says, when our world is shaken, and when our hope is broken, still, and you can fill it in. God, you're God. Still, you are the God of all. And even though our heart is heavy and our world is shaken, God, I know your word is true. I stand on that. And I know I'm speaking really literally to the choir in here this morning, but goodness, the one thing that, that I really want to get across to you this morning is that you wake up one morning, you're with your family, you're having a great time, you're on vacation, and one second it changes. And for some people, how dramatically did it change? But God's constant. He didn't change. And all I kept thinking about was, and I was thinking... I don't know if you remember the lady that was talking about how she just was reaching up and she was just praying to the Lord about coming out of the water and she felt like that she was being sucked down. You know, we really do have an enemy. <laughs> He's real. And he just wanted to suck her down. But you know what? God said live. Brought her to the surface. And I don't know all the gist of why and the hows. And I don't need to know because I do, I do know this. <laughs> God's still in control and when I feel like my hope is broken, that's really not the truth of it because God is my hope. So, Father, oh, man, you just surround this place this morning. like You just hover over us, Father God, like a cleansing rain, God, coming down this morning on, on needs all over this congregation this morning. Father God, did you just hover over the state of Missouri, Father God. And from where all these people were from, Father God, you just, you just hover over them with a sense of peace that surpasses on uh, all understanding, God. And we're going to sing to you and we're going to focus upon you, God. 
Because when I don't know what else to do, I'm just going to look to you, Father. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are our life when death is all around. You are
Church, the, uh, as time goes on, and uh, I know this is a Captain Obvious statement, but I'm going to say, say it anyway, that as we move on down the timeline of life and you live one day to the next, it becomes more apparent to me how true God's Word is. Seeing in James chapter 4, it says, life is but a vapor, it's a mist. You think about a water bottle that's put on mist. You know, the old things you used to turn. You could spray a stream at your brother. You could mist it, you know. You just puff that out of there, and it's gone like that. Now, listen. God put that in, your, in his word for a reason, and it's not to scare you. It's not to freak you out. It's not to overwhelm you with fear. This is why it's there, to get it right, to get it right. And I have this in my spirit. I've had it all week about somebody out there 
there's something with, with you in a relationship with someone you love that's so petty. It's petty. See, God, God's wanting you to get it right with that person because, listen, your life's going to be over, church. And that's, that's not to be scared. That's just to get ready. Be ready. See, those people in Branson, they were just having a good time. I remember reading in the thing they gave us for Father's Day about a, a son whose last, interfe- last, his last words to his dad, they were in a big fight. And then his dad got killed in a car wreck. And he lived with that regret. Now listen, petty things don't matter, church. That's why they're called petty. And I'm going to tell you what holds on to petty things is pride. And this is what the Word of God says. Now, this doesn't tickle, but this is the truth. The Word of God says that pride goes before the fall. That's what it says. Here's what you need to do. Now, listen, take it from a guy. Listen, I've watched my daughters. One of the hardest things for them to do is to say they're sorry. I'm taking it. It takes some serious threats. I tell Avery all the time, I don't really care that you hit the refrigerator with a baseball bat. Okay, I don't care about that. What I care about is that you denied it and you won't say you're sorry. Now, they get those genes from somewhere, and it's obviously their mother. <laughs> Why are you all laughing? I'm sorry, Audrey. If you're, if you're here yet, I'm sorry. But listen, is there something so petty to keep a brother from a brother, a mother from a son, a son and a father? Here's as easy as it is. Hey, I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. See, when tragedy, when, when tragedy strikes, I think about how fragile life is and how precedent it how, is, how the moments, you, you just don't know what you've got. So don't take moments for granted. See, you can make more money. You can buy more clothes. You can do all things, but you can't make a second. Get it right, church. Life is but a vapor. Life is but a vapor. But ushers, you come. Father God, here's what we're going to do, church. I know this is not what we normally do, but oh well. I want you to raise your hands up here. Listen, there are families in Indiana and families in Arkansas and families in Branson that right now are going to church without that one woman lost her husband and three kids. So we're going to pray for them. The Word of God says he'll give you peace that surpasses understanding. So I want every, whether you want to or not, awkward or not, point your hands up here and we're going to pray for those people. Father God, we just lift up the families, Father God, and the communities, Father God, the brothers, the sisters, the aunts, the uncles, the friends, Father God. Lord, we just lift those people up to you, Father God, Lord, that, that are dealing with the hurt and the broken of a loss, Lord. Lord, they feel robbed, they feel shortened. That they feel that, that it's been taken from them, Father God. Lord, and we don't understand why, Father God. Lord, but regardless of the circumstances that took place on Table Rock Lake on Thursday afternoon, God, you are still God. And every truth that's in your word still rings true today, Father God. And I just pray, Father God, that those people, Father God, that are hurting and broken this morning, Father God, can feel the peace of God, Lord, from a little church in Willow Springs praying. Lord, we lift them up. We lift them up, Father God. Lord, because for us it's a news story, but for them it's life. (laughs) It's life. God, we just thank you, Lord, that we have you to call on, that we have you to to call to and to read to, Father God, and, and to look for strength. Lord, we love you and thank you for who you are, God, in Jesus' name. Amen.
就。